Thank you so much for coming back to my channel. I know I've been away for a couple of weeks, but uh, I'm back uh, with full force. I'm so ready to give you guys so much more content on this channel. Uh, I'm writing down and researching so many new ways to help inspire you on a daily basis. If not every other day, um, I'm going to do way better about posting um, more consistently from now on. Anyway, this is part two of uh, my textile design video that I posted um, a couple weeks ago on Tuesday. Um, so this is going to be part two of my Technique Tuesday on um, how to design a textile pattern. Um, in this particular video, um, I'm going to go through with you on Adobe Illustrator, um, showing you exactly how to create a seamless pattern using some images that you might have just sketched down in your sketchbook. So, uh, all this and more coming right up. Yeah, so the first video, in case you haven't seen it already, um, that actually just talked about my ideas, how I get better ideas um, and inspiration for, for my designs. This one is a lot more technical. So I'm really excited to show you how um, I taught myself how to do um, seamless pattern design on Illustrator. So. All right guys, so here are the images I came up with for my project. Um, this is the first image of many different um, sketches that I made in my sketchbook. Um, I actually put together these designs from hand-drawn images. Every single one of these patterns was completely hand-drawn to begin with, but then I um, made them into vector images using Adobe Illustrator, and that's what I'm going to show you how to do um, in this video. All right, so the first thing I definitely want to tell you is to organize yourself by creating folders on your desktop. Um, I have one with reference photos, one with uh, drafts and scans, and the other with my final images. So um, just drag your scan. We'll scan your image into the computer first, of course, and drag that scan of whatever you sketched in your sketchbook over to Photoshop. And uh, in Photoshop here, um, what I'm going to need you to do is you're going to need to bump that contrast up or at least darken the image itself. So you see if you bump the contrast up all the way there, you see how much darker it is. And if you take the brightness down just a little bit, that helps. See if it's too bright, then you can't see the image as well. So you want to get it as dark and as thick as possible in order for this process to work. So then um, you're going to want to save it. And I save it to my desktop until I'm completed with my project and then I'll store it away in the appropriate folders. Okay, so now we are going to Go on to our desktop and see what we saved there, and we're going to pull that into Adobe Illustrator. After that loads, I cut that part out, of course. <laughs> Make sure that uh, your image is completely highlighted. Go to Object at the top, Image Trace, and then Make and Expand. And it will take a moment to process here. And voila! vector images with no background. So you see everything that's highlighted there is what you have drawn on the paper. It's pretty fascinating, huh? Sometimes you're gonna to need to edit some stuff. Um, you're gonna to want to move some things around. You're gonna figure out that your drawing isn't as perfect as it was um, in this format as it was originally. So you can go in and uh, here, I'll zoom in here. You can go in and uh, you know, of course you can, you know, just move things around a little bit or you can use the curvature tool, which I love using, and it creates these perfect curves between every point that you put on an object. So here, I'm gonna drag this one there, and I want it to be a little thicker on this side. All right. All right, 
Next thing that you're going to want to do is use the lasso tool and you just drag that around the images that you want to use for your particular um, project. And you can do Command C, which I use, or Edit Copy, either way. So you're copying this entire image. And then I do go to File, New to create a new image. Um, and I always like to start with an artboard of 1,000 pixels by 1,000 pixels. An exact, an exact square is what you're going to definitely need to create a seamless pattern like I'm about to show you. All right, so here's our blank canvas, or our <laughs> artboard, of course. Um, and I'm gonna do Command V, or you can do Edit, edit Paste as well. Um, and one thing you can do when you select all the images together, um, you can hold down the Shift key and pull the corners to keep all of it from warping. So um, I'm taking the lasso tool now and I'm going to individually cut out all these images by doing object group. So all these bits are grouped together and I can put all these little flowers or trees or whatever you want to see them as in their separate areas and you just group all of those. All right, I'm actually going to enlarge these images just a little bit more. So I'm gonna hold down that shift key again and drag the corner so all of them are the same size. And then the next thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take the top portion and do the left hand portion of your artboard and um, put your images there um, as they will overlap. So think about it as this is your first square and your square is gonna be surrounded by four other squares on each side. So you're gonna want these images to kind of hang off of the edge. So um, I'm just going to move these around and copy and paste and flip and all that fun stuff until I feel like I'm comfortable with it. So as you can see here, I don't have enough images to completely fill the left-hand side and the top portion of my artboard, so I'm doing Command-C, moving that up, but that's the same image. So transform, reflect, and you can reflect it vertically um, so that you have a flipped image, because you never want to have the same image um, next to another. Um, it doesn't make for a very good-looking pattern. It might look very strange from far away. We'll get into that in another video, though. So you just go ahead and fill up the space. I'll leave that one the way it is. Uh, maybe not. All right, I think that looks good. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're going to select all the images on the left-hand side by holding down the Shift key. And I like to group those just in case I move one around accidentally. Doing a group. And then I'll go to um, Object, Transform, and Move. And here under Move, you will do horizontally. You will do 1,000 because you, it was 1,000 pixels. That was your artboard, remember? And then uh, the vertical is zero. And you want to click the Preview button. And you want to not just press OK but you want to press copy so you have it on both sides. All right, so there it is, duplicated on the other side. And it's perfect and it will create a very seamless pattern and you'll see that when we're done. And then you can do the same thing uh, with the top images. Object, transform, move. But instead, this time you're going to do vertical 1,000. All right, and so you see you have it all around here perfectly. And then the next thing you're going to want to do is, um, well, ungroup what you have grouped on all four sides. And 
Then you can take one at a time, copy and paste, and uh, move it around the image itself until you create the pattern that you're looking for. Just keep on going. Just do not um, have any pieces of these new ones that you're putting in the center um, hang off of the edge. So you see that one that I put on the bottom there is not touching or going over the edge of the artboard. So I'm doing the same thing, transform, reflect, reflecting some images, making them a little different, moving them around. I didn't want to make them different sizes because um, as they are all the same size, it can create a more seamless pattern in my opinion. And here I am speeding through this. No, I did not do this as fast. <laughs> Alright, so here is my pattern. Okay, so the next thing you're going to want to do um, is you're going to highlight the whole thing. Object group. And then uh, I go to the bottom uh, underneath my artboard here and I see that um, my swatch is currently black for color. Um, I click the rectangle key, a thousand by a thousand pixels, so it's the exact same size as my artboard. I go to the selection tool and I drag it up and it automatically goes over my image. And so I zoom in to make sure that it is aligned perfectly. See here it was not. So I like to just double check and I will double check on all four corners as well. Sorry guys, I realized my microphone wasn't plugged in for a second. Um, hopefully you were able to hear everything I was saying. If not, um, please put that in the comments below and um, I can answer any questions you have for me. Um, anyway, so here we are. I have it all perfectly aligned now. I think so anyway. Sometimes you never know and you need to go back and fix it, but don't forget about that. So you go and uh, select everything with your selection tool again. And you're going to want to go to Window, Pathfinder. Uh, mine's already selected because I already had this Pathfinder window up down here, but it will have this little window pop up. And then there, right here, is Crop. You click that, and uh, you see everything completely cut off, everything that wasn't in the artboard. So then, of course, I'm going to want to save this. All right, now here's a super fun part. Okay, now select everything, make sure to group it, do object group if you haven't already, and then go to window pattern options. Here it looks like you can't click on anything and I'm like, oh my gosh, what do I do? And then you go to this upper right hand corner and you do make pattern. It says it's gonna be added to the swatches panel. Uh, the swatches are actually these colors right up here um, in the right hand corner in this box that I have already open. And you'll see my pattern is saved as a color right there it's pretty cool um, also another thing that I like to do is I like to save it as a copy for myself um, so I save that as a copy YouTube pattern design yeah okay okay and you'll see it's another little swatch right next to that other swatch that was there just a second one just in case I exit out of that and uh, so you can't really see exactly what I did here, but you can see those little white spots and that's from me editing that one piece before. Uh, be sure to flatten your image. If you don't, you're gonna have a right here um, what has happened to me. So be sure to flatten the image before you transfer it to your final artboard. Anyway, so you're gonna click done. And I'm gonna go down to the bottom of my artboard here, click the rectangle tool again. You're gonna see that my pattern's right there in the color swatch. Your selection tool is there, a thousand by a thousand pixels, great. So I'm gonna do uh, Control C or edit copy. I'm gonna do file new. I'm gonna create a whole new document and I want it to be five times bigger than what I'm seeing right now so that I can really see what this pattern looks like um, when it's larger. 
So we're going to do 5,000 by 5,000 pixels this time. So five times the size of our original artboard. All right, here it is. And I'm just going to drag the corners out. And I don't need to be careful to use the shift key since nothing's going to warp since this is actually kind of like putting color uh, in a background or something like that at this point. So now you see, you don't see any of the images overlapping in weird ways, then you, uh, then you did it correctly. If you didn't, it's okay. Just um, undo it, go back, try it again. Um, just keep uh, overlapping that uh, rectangle tool over, make sure that it's completely perfect. And that's how you will get your seamless pattern. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you learned a lot. Um, if you have any questions for me, please put those in the comments below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Um, and also be sure to click subscribe if you haven't already. Remember to stay peaceful as a calm mind is a creative mind. Now go get inspired, be an influence and make something beautiful today. Peace.